Hey guys, welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today I am sharing six tips and tricks to make weaving easier, faster, and better. So let's get started. Now before we dive into these tips and tricks, let's take a quick ad break. I wanna tell you two things. The first one is about our weaving merch. Check this out, you guys. We worked with such a fabulous illustrator who brought this design to life. I am in love with it. It comes in two color palettes, this one and a very earthy, more muted tone one. You can check out all the merch. It comes on shirts and stickers and all the fun things by clicking the link in the description box below. Ad number two. I want to remind you that we now have Patreon. Patreon is a subscription platform that allows creators like me to create subscriptions. We have two tiers on ours. The first subscription we're calling the supporters tier. And by the way, when I say we, I mean my husband Cody and I, he edits all of these videos you see on our channel. So round of applause for Cody for editing all of these videos and also putting up with me saying so. I say so and you guys, like so much, <laughs> forgive me. The Supporters Club helps support us making these tutorials here on YouTube. It will also gain you some behind the scenes and sneak peeks on products and videos as well. And you can kind of think of this as a buy me a coffee kind of situation. Because when Cody and I go for coffee dates, we end up brainstorming new video ideas, um, strategies for the YouTube channel, and just in general get really excited to bring you more content here. The second tier is called the Tutorial Club and it's pretty self-explanatory Every month you're gonna get an all new tutorial that will not be on YouTube. It's just for patrons. We will be selling some of these as standalone classes, but the better deal is going to be Patreon. Most often this will be a full project tutorial. We're gonna put a picture here for you now so you can see the first project. I love it. It's very vintage vibes, a floral overshot, all the things. If you want to check us out on Patreon, you can go to patreon.com slash spruce and linen or click the link in the description box below. All right, you guys, it's time to start diving into these tips and tricks. Now, I will be mentioning some of the things that I sell in my shop. There are lots of other shops, of course, that you can support and get them from, but these are the things that I actually use, which is why I sell them. And it's kind of one of those things where it's like, made for weavers, buy a weaver. You know what I'm saying? But of course, as I always say, you do you, pick the right tools, all the things that are gonna work best for you. Tip number one, find something to put your warp spool in. <laughs> now there's nothing more frustrating than trying to warp your loom and your spool of warp string is flying all over the place. I find what works best is if your spool is sitting upright because I'll just show you here. The spool or the string wants to pull off the spool most easily when it's coming from the top. But as soon as you start pulling it off really quickly, the spool wants to fly around all over the place. So when I have a bigger spool, when it's really full, I'll stick it in a bowl like this, maybe even something bigger. You could use a box, just anything to contain it and stop it from flying across the room. But when your spool gets small, so you've used a big chunk of the warp string on your spool, this bowl, it's still gonna wanna flip around in and be more difficult to use. So that's when I bring out just like a mason jar and I stick it in there. And what this does again, is it keeps the spool completely upright, making it super easy to pull the warp string off of the spool. Tip number two is to invest in some weaving tools. So I make weaving tools. And so I'm gonna be really biased about our tapestry needles, but my best recommendation is that whatever tapestry needle you do decide to use, make sure it's a rigid one. So not something that's loosey goosey. However, the small, more plastic ones or even acrylic ones, they do work fine on a smaller piece. But once you start working on a larger piece, trust me when I say you're gonna want something rigid like this. They feel great in your hand. And we've gotten a ton of reviews that just tell us like, oh my goodness, I can weave so much faster now. Um, and of course, again, I am biased on the ones that I create because they are the ones that I use as well. But there are lots of different rigid tapestry needles out there. So definitely grab yourself some of those. And the second one is a weaving comb. We create these two solid wood. What this does specifically, this is gonna be super handy when you're doing something like overshot 
or twill. I use it for weaving in general, but especially on those, it's going to help you beat down more evenly, which is what you want on a a twill or an overshot because everything needs to stay super, super straight, but I use it for all kinds of weaving. Weaving tools like this are created to make your life easier, to make weaving faster. We've even included a hole in our comb so you could put a string on it and wear it as a necklace so that when you're working, especially on a big project and you might not be at a table, you can beat your weaving down, drop it, and it's still on your person so you don't lose it. Tip number three, get yourself some good scissors. And I don't mean to say you need to buy super expensive scissors for them to be good. That is why I love LDH scissors, so much so that I actually sell these in my shop. You can get them tons of other places, including from LDH directly if you prefer, but these are reasonably priced, super sharp scissors, and they are super beautiful. There are different styles, sizes, and all those kinds of things on the LDH website. These are the two that I have on my website because they're the ones that I use. So literally, you guys, once you've used a good pair of scissors, you'll never wanna go back because you'll suddenly realize how frustrated and slow you've been moving because your scissors aren't sharp enough and you're trying to ream through you know, a lot of yarn, especially when you're cutting your fringe and this is just gonna make your life a whole lot easier. I like to use the small one for all kinds of things, but the, I use the small ones most for trimming the ends after I tuck them in on the back of the weaving. Again, it's just going to make you realize how much quicker you can move and how much more enjoyable the process is. But truthfully, once you've tried using some good quality sharp scissors, you're never gonna to wanna to go back, but definitely hide them and don't use them on paper because then they'll last longer. Tip number four is to create some templates for yourself for cutting your fringe. I find myself wrapping my fringe around all kinds of things to measure it, including chairs, books, literally just whatever random object I can find in my house. And then I realized I should really cut myself some templates. It can be a little tricky if you're not always using the same length of trim, but here's what I would suggest. Go pick up a sheet of super cheap quarter inch plywood. There's This is Baltic birch plywood from Home Depot. It comes in a, I believe like a two by two sheet. They will cut it there for you and you can get it in all different lengths. If you create a few very common sizes and find yourself using those lengths over and over again, cut yourself some templates. So if you find yourself creating the same size of weaving over and over again, maybe you're getting ready for a market or whatever it is, this is going to make your life a whole lot easier. You can then, you know, write down some notes for yourself as you create new pieces that you used such and such a size of your fringe and easily be able to wrap it around. So literally, what I like to do, and I'm sure for a lot of you this is, this is obvious, but um, instead of cutting your fringe one by one, you wrap it around something. So this would be the length of your fringe and you just wrap it around. And it's my go-to way, um, a few months ago, if you caught the video about when I bought a yarn swift, an Amish style yarn swift to cut fringe, it ended up being a little bit wobbly, so I don't really use it. I find myself always wrapping my fringe around something. So I figured this would be a really good way to just kind of get yourself organized and a system that's easy to go back to. Tip number five, get yourself a laundry basket. Now all silliness aside, this is the best way I have found to contain materials when I'm working on a piece. Now, if you're like me and you have a ton of different materials, they're strewn about, they're in, maybe they're in drawers, whatever the way you store them is, this is a great way to gather up your materials to use for a specific project, throw them in the basket, and then regardless of where you're working, well, one, it makes it really easy to carry them, it's better than a tote bag because it's rigid. You can really dig around in there and not feel like you're losing everything quite as much. And it just makes it so much easier. If you're like me and you weave in your kitchen, in your living room, in whatever random location that you have space, but you wanna clean up at the end of the day super easily, you can toss them back in the basket, stick this on, the, on a shelf or wherever, and it's all contained, but you're not having to put each individual yarn away and losing what you were working with. 
This is such a simple one, but honestly was a game changer because I was just using tote bags, but I found, honestly, what would happen is that eventually my cat would jump into the tote bag, it would fall off the chair that it was sitting on and just be a disaster. Because this is rigid, it's just gonna be sturdier. Last, but definitely not least, I'm not proud to tell you how long it took me to realize I could do this one, um, but it has made my life a whole lot easier. Now, when I'm doing these tutorials, I need to work on the flat so that our top-down camera that's sitting right above me right now can see down onto what I'm weaving super easily. And I know a lot of you probably weave flat on the table as well. This one was such a game changer. And like I said, I'm not proud of how long it took me to, to do this. So what I do, is I take painter's tape, specifically painter's tape, because painter's tape is meant to come off the surface that you put it on. So do not use duct tape, just don't do it. Use painter's tape. Can I emphasize that 10 times more? Now, all I do is take that painter's tape, make a little loop, put it on each corner of my loom, and then when I go to put it on the table, I can stick it down, and this also won't wreck your table because it's painter's tape. Now I can stick it down and as you can see, it's not wobbly at all. This is so much better. For a few filming reasons, of course, it doesn't slide around and end up out of frame, but it's also not noisy and honestly, is just so much better than feeling like you have to hold on to the loom, which I know can get really tiring and annoying and you might find yourself, you know, in awkward positions like this just to hold it still. Um, some looms come with, with legs for them as well, which is great. But on these smaller frame looms, honestly, this is my go-to and it just feels really secure and makes weaving faster because it's not flailing all over the place. Again, I know this was a super, super simple one, but when I realized I could do this, I was like, oh my gosh, this makes my life so much easier and it makes me be able to weave faster because I'm not constantly, again, trying to hold on to the loom. And I mean, just to demonstrate, you know, when it's not taped down, as soon as I, like, I have to hold on to it. So that's one of the best ones I have found. And again, with that painter's tape, isn't going to destroy your loom or destroy your table. All right, you guys, so there are six tips and tricks to make weaving faster, easier, and just better. I hope you've liked these. If you have some tips that I did not include today, Put them in the comments below. Let me know some of your tips and tricks and maybe we'll do an updated version of this video at some point to include them. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.